Happy with the location, Drew? That's good. Oh, no, no, we got the briefing, mate. Well, good morning, everybody. Queenslanders deserve to know the truth with what is happening in their hospital system. And if the government values fixing the Queensland health crisis, they will value openness and transparency. We're calling on the government today to release the quarterly data. We are now well into October, and I'm asking the government to release it so that we can work together to fix it. And we've got question time starting from tomorrow. It is essential that that data is in the public space so that the government can be held accountable, so that solutions can be put on the table and so that we can debate the latest information. In a moment, uh, Ros will explain the lengths that the government has gone to to keep this data from public viewing and some of the political shenanigans that have been put forward in the past. But I'm going to make the point. The question remains, when will we see ambulance ramping back to 15%? because we've heard in recent times that the pressure is coming off the health system. Well, release the data and show us the results of that. And Queenslanders aren't going to accept a small reduction. We were told that at 30% Queensland Health was a basket case. When will it be 15%? When will Queenslanders again know that their health system is there and able to serve them in their hour of need? When will they know that they have a government that values openness and transparency? And when will they know that the health crisis is behind us? Because for seven years, these figures have continued to deteriorate. And hiding the data isn't going to help a single Queenslander. Over to you, Ross. Thanks, David. Ross Bates, Shadow Minister for Health and Ambulance Services and Registered Nurse. Well, Queenslanders deserve to know the truth about what's happening in, these, in our hospitals. Um, and today we're releasing some documents that clearly show that the Minister is more concerned about protecting her own bacon than she is about protecting Queenslanders. This Minister is more about protecting her own political skin than protecting Queenslanders. There was an orchestrated release of the data 15 minutes before question time from the last lot of data at the last question time on the last sitting of Parliament. These documents clearly show that the Minister was trying to orchestrate when that data was released, orchestrating it so that it was released straight after, right before question time so that it prevented people answering, uh, and her answering questions on this issue. You can't trust this minister. She's underhanded and sneaky. And we need to make sure that Queenslanders know exactly what's happening in our hospital. And these, are the, these are the documents that we're happy to provide to the media on that issue. The minister can't be trusted. She said that people weren't dying on the ramp. They were. She said that Category 1A um, ambulances were uh, meeting their targets and getting out to Queenslanders in their hour of need. They weren't. She said that bypass was gone. That's not true. She also said that there was nothing to see at the DNA lab and that we were scaremongering. Where it comes to Mackay, again, the minister said there was nothing to see here. Uh, this minister cannot be trusted. Uh, she certainly can't be trusted in releasing um, the data on time. And we know from her own words that she talks about cleaning the data before Queenslanders actually get to see what's happening in their own hospitals. This minister is more worried about her own political skin than she is about what's happening um, in our Queensland hospitals. Not only did Yvette Darth know about a lot of these issues, particularly at Mackay, uh, she didn't ask the questions. I mean, wouldn't you think as a minister, when these issues were raised 12 months ago, when the LNP were raising these issues, when the media were raising these issues, wouldn't you think the minister would actually drill down into her department and find out what's going on? But not this minister, not Yvette Darth. What she did was blame uh, all of the victims. She blamed the whistleblowers who were coming out uh, in support of their own patients. They wanted to make sure that their patients were safe. This minister didn't listen, um, she didn't act, and she can't be trusted to fix the health system. Uh, on the issue with Mackay, I've seen reports this morning about uh, patients who may have been victims of uh, the obstetric crisis and also the uro urological crisis. 
I can tell you myself that I spoke to a woman the other day in Mackay who was a victim of the obstetric crisis and she was due to have her surgery done by that particular uh, urologist and it was cancelled uh, at, at the last minute. Uh, then we find out that um, there are huge shadows over this doctor. So um, we do know of people um, who uh, were due to have their surgery uh, who might have been victims of both of these things. Again about Mackay, the minister knew she was warned about these issues, she lied about them and then she tried to blame the victims, she tried to blame the staff and she tried to blame everybody else who were raising these issues. If you're a whistleblower in Queensland Health, why the hell would you put your hand up? Because you've got a minister who doesn't believe you, who doesn't drill down into her own department to find out what's going on. Enough is enough. Yvette Darth needs to be sacked today. And if Anastasia Palaszczuk hadn't checked out, she would have sacked her yesterday. David? Before I take questions, I'll just make a point about the, the woman that Roz spoke with who was just about to have that surgery. How many more victims were put in harm's way because the government refused to listen and refused to act. That's the question today. There is a consequence for not listening and there is a consequence for putting political survival ahead of patient survival. And the government's got to admit today that for 12 months they refused to do a thing about it. And as a result, Queenslanders were put in harm's way. Over to you. Um, deeply concerning and it shows what happens when there is a culture of suppression, when there's a culture of whistleblowers not being believed, when there's a culture of cover-ups and when there's a culture of putting political survival ahead of patient survival. If the government is serious about healing the health crisis and weeding out the bad apples, well then the minister would be the first to say please come forward and we'll listen and we'll act straight away. But that is not what is happening. That's not what happened with the DNA lab. That's not what is happening with ambulance ramping. Every time we have a situation where somebody bravely steps up and tells their story, they get mocked and derided. We get told we're scaremongering. For goodness sake, we are taking the concerns forward on behalf of patients, paramedics, medical professionals, and the government continues to find every excuse not to listen and not to act. There's a consequence for that. And that consequence is Queensland patients being put in harm's way and a system that continues to spiral from crisis to crisis. And sooner or later, somebody has to be held accountable for this system that is crumbling before our eyes. Well, um, when the minister used those words, we collectively shook our heads. Why does data need to be cleaned? Data needs to be released. What I would like to see and what I commit to doing is releasing data in real time. I want to see data available for medical professionals and Queenslanders. What that does is it creates a culture of accountability. The fact that we don't get quarterly data, in some state, in, at some points we were five months delayed in getting data from the start of a quarter. How on earth can you fix a system and how on earth can you drive accountability and change when the government's sole focus is on when is it politically expedient to release. The RTI that Roz has revealed today, when you read it, it tells you everything you need to know about how this government has changed and how in its third term everything is about its political survival. The whole, this is data they had for weeks and it was ready to be released. And yet in some politically silly game, it was all about how can we release it moments before question time so that we said we, it was there and the opposition never quizzed us. That is governing at its slipperiest and that is governing for itself rather than Queenslanders. And we want to drive change. And the way to drive change is to be open and accountable. And it starts with sharing data in real time. Well, well, of course, and the government's made certain commitments around those recommendations. Um, but I'll make the point, 
it's been several months and we still don't know what's going on in Cabinet. It's been several months and we still haven't had the government outline how they will embed the reforms and a timeline. It's almost as though the government believes that as a result of that report, everything's hunky-dory. Well, there's been no change. I would argue the culture of secrecy has deteriorated since the Colvrack review was put on the table. Uh, I stand by that nothing short of a full-blown royal commission will ever get to the bottom of the way this government operates in Queensland. And the fact that some incredibly damning findings were found as part of the Coldrake Review, even with that terms of reference, and the fact that the government won't even embark on those tells you everything they, you need to know about their behaviour. Do you think the um, government's actually politically benefiting from this transparency when we're finding out about this stuff anyway, through all these inquiries and everything, later on? Um, I'll let I'll let the government um, talk about its scheduling and why it conducts itself the way it does, uh, but I'll make you this promise. Health data will be released in real time uh, under a government I lead, and it won't be some sort of political silly game about trying to catch the opposition out by tabling it a few minutes before question time. I, I, I'm actually embarrassed to see a government that operates like that. If they were serious about healing the health crisis, they would be willing to share the data. Um, the problem is, is that every time they share the data, it paints a picture of seven years of deterioration. Now, in the last couple of years, they have tried to cling to every excuse to justify why their data is the way it is. Well, there is a trajectory that has happened for over half a decade, and nowhere else has ambulance ramping at the level we have. Now, the Premier made some comments in recent weeks to say that in recent months, their pressure has come off the health system. Well, show us the data and answer the question, when will ambulance ramping be back to 15 per cent? We won't let them off the hook that somehow the new benchmark is 45 per cent. 45 per cent is at levels that no Queensland patient should ever experience. 30 per cent was deemed Queensland Health to be a basket case. We were talking about separating Queensland Health under Premier Bly when ambulance ramping was at 30 per cent. 30 per cent is is by no means a benchmark we should be striving and aspirational to reach. Ambulance ramping at 15% um, is so far in the rear vision mirror, this government has given up on even setting KPIs. It's almost like they're just lurching from week to week and month to month and trying to work out when they can release it that nobody's watching. You can't improve what you don't measure. And that's the stage that we've reached in Queensland at the moment. Thank you, sorry, CJ, tonight. Um, the Do you think should be banned? Um, well, whether it's a, a real gun or a toy gun, anyone who threatens people should feel the full force of the law. And it's, uh, I'm, sure it, I'm sure it didn't matter to the law enforcement officers. Um, the, the threat is real, the intimidation is real, and Queenslanders who um, use any weapon in a threatening manner should feel the full force of the law. I'd like to see people who conduct themselves in a threatening behaviour to have the book thrown at them. And that should be our sole focus. How can we make sure that people who conduct themselves in behaviour that makes society feel less safe, how can we throw the book at those people? How can we make sure that they are held accountable? That should be our sole focus. We haven't moved the needle on protected areas in this state uh, for the seven years of this government. And there were some commitments made at the start of the Palaszczuk government, nearly eight years ago, and that commitment it was that we would see protected areas at 17%. It still remains around 8%, and it has barely moved. This is the government's issue with every environmental target it has set. It has either not been met, it has either been delayed or abandoned. Now, governments can stand up and talk about all sorts of aspirational things when it comes to the environment. Action matters. And the fact that our protected areas in this state has not moved in over half a decade tells you everything you need to know about a government that says one thing but has an inability to listen and to act. When should the government have released a flat report which was handed to them in August, I believe? Um, I respect that dealing with 
uh, floods takes time and needs to be considered. But good governments are willing to share reports and work with the community to fix them. And, and I'll make the point on floods. We haven't seen a levy, a retention basin or a dam built in this state for seven years. Not one. Now, it's one thing to warn the community about impending disaster. It's another thing to have a plan and roll it out. And uh, I was in a position once to work with local governments and we built some detention basins and we built some levees uh, and they all stood the test of time and ask the people of Roma what it means to be protected. Their insurance premiums fell 45% the day that that, that levy opened. And uh, I've stood on it subsequently and seen homes that otherwise would have been flooded protected. And that is a similar tale. Eulo, Wyandra, uh, Bolan, Town of St George, all of those communities came to us with a desire to build levies or in increased catchment areas or detention basins uh, and we worked with them and we delivered it. And there hasn't been a single one done in over seven years. And flood preparation matters. So governments should release reports and they should outline a strategy to deliver infrastructure to protect Queenslanders. Thanks everyone. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you.